What's up? What's up? What's up? So my mind is astute when I'm trying a observation. This is maximal score after applying K observations. You are given a zero indexed integer array nums and an integer K. Okay. You have a starting score of zero. In one operation, you can choose any index such that it's within the boundaries of the nums that you're given. And you can increase your score by that number, the number that's at that index, and replace nums i with ceiling of nums i divided by 3. Return the maximum possible score you can attain after applying k operations. Um, now you replace it with the ceiling function, right? So the ceiling function takes the number and always rounds it up, right? Rounds it up to the largest remaining number. Right, so if it's 4.3, it's going to seal up to 5. If it's 6.9, it's going to seal up to 7. If it's 4.20, it's going to seal up to 5. Right, so always the higher number if it uh, has decimals. If it's a whole number, it stays at the same whole number. We don't need to concern ourselves too much, right, because there's a ceiling function in Python, so we can just use that and not really think about what that actually does. Really, we don't really need to think about it too much. Okay, right, so stated much better, right? The ceiling function, seal of val is the least integer greater than or equal to val. Okay. So for this example, we got 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, and we can apply five operations. So we're just going to apply the operation to each element in the array once and get the final score of 50, right? So you apply it to this 10, and then you're going to replace this 10 with... You're going to apply it to this 10, and then you're going to replace this 10 with the ceiling of 10 divided by 3. So you get 10 points to your score, right? And then you have to replace this with 10 divided by 3, which is what? 3 goes into 10, 3 goes into 9 three times, so 3 point something, 3 and a third. You round that up to 4. Then you apply it to this one, and you get another 10. And you apply it to this one, you get another 10. You apply it to this one, you get another 10. And you apply it to this one, and you get, <gasps> alas, another 10. Right? So that's not that interesting. Um, let's look at this example because it gives us a little bit more involved. Uh, the problem's a little bit more involved. So if you have uh, um, this array given, well, obviously, you want to maximize your score. So you want to use whatever's maximum within this array, right? So it's a very greedy approach, right? If I want to make the most money possible, I'm going to choose whatever thing will give me the most money, right? So I'm going to choose this 10 because this 10 is going to give me the most score, right? And the fact that it gets smaller doesn't matter because if it gets smaller, then I'll just use whatever smaller right i'm always i'm going to have to pick something regardless and whatever i pick is going to get smaller so i might as well pick what gives me the most information or gives me the the highest score so then when i replace this it becomes 4 whoa right and then oh well now it's actually better to use this again right because the 4 is greater than anything else so i'll apply it to this again and i'll get 4 divided by 3 which is 1 and some change and that'll become 2 so i'll get 10 and 4 um, and then I'll apply it to one of these threes, right? And this will become three divided by four, so it'll become one, right? Because three divided by four is 0.75. Round that up, you get one. And that's it because I can only apply three operations. So if we look at this, right, we select i equals one, so we get ten points. It becomes this. We we use the four, and then we select the four, so it becomes this. And then we select uh, i equals 2, which is this 3, and it becomes um, this at the end. Oh, sorry, this becomes 1. I think this might actually have a mistake here. Right, because this is a 2. We change. We select i equals 2, so this shouldn't change by anything. Right, so I think there's actually a bug in this. This is a new problem, so that's common, right? For example, you'll notice that the some of the language in this problem is kind of strange. So 
I'm not going to worry too much about that. I, I, I think this is an error here. You know, I'm right. The problem's never wrong. <laughs> I'm just joking. But the score is the same, so we're just going to assume that this process here is right. Um, don't mind that. But, you know, so you, you're always choosing whatever's maximum within your system, right? You choose the 10 because it's the maximum thing. You choose the four because it's the maximum thing. You choose the next three because it's the maximum thing, right? So you always choose whatever is maximum within your system because that's going to maximize your score. So it's a greedy approach. I think it's pretty intuitive, right? Like if you have a system of things and you're trying to maximize your score, then pick what, pick what gives you the maximum. I guess what makes this problem a little difficult is that when you choose something that's maximum, it could end up being maximum again, right? When I choose this 10 and the score decreases to four, it's still the maximum at this index. So I can't just say like, choose the 10 and then the next maximum thing is three, right? Because when I choose the 10 at the next iteration, it could still be the maximum, right? It's not static. It's not just like I have 10, then three, then three, then three, then one, right? I can't just choose this 10 and know, okay, I've used the 10, so the next best thing would be to use three. We can't know that because the 10 just changes to a four. So it's still the maximum thing in the system. So we can't just sort the system and then look at everything. But what we can do, and this is what requires a, a, a data structure understanding, right? Because sometimes when you do these problems, you can just use pure intuition and you can just kind of think through, okay, if this is the case, if this is not the case, this would be the switch statement. Okay, this is how I deal with this situation. And other times you have a problem where it's pretty clear what you need to do, but you may not be aware of, of data structures, which will give you an efficient way to solve the problem at hand. Because the problem at hand is we always need to know what? Every time we go through this system, right? So we're going to go, we're going to have some score. We'll, it starts with zero. And we're going to go through the system K times, right? Because we're going to have K k iterations where we're trying to select something from the system right there's k times right if k equals three that means i select three things from the system so i'm going to be selecting three things from the system but every time i select something from the system i need an efficient way of knowing what is the largest thing that i can select right i think a very you know rudim not rudimentary but fundamental thing you learn about is sorting so you could say okay i'll sort this array and then i'll pick the largest thing but you would have to sort the array again after you select the largest thing because, because what? Because it may end up still being the largest thing. You don't know where this thing's gonna go with, with respect to everything else after you apply this op, uh, operation, right? After you apply, uh, sorry, this operation here. So what we need to use is a heap because what a heap allows you to do is efficiently put things into um, you put things into a heap and you can use a constant operation to pull out the largest thing or pull out the smallest thing and you can use a log n operation to put something in there um, put something back in so what you do is you create this thing as a heap right and that's going to take n log n time and every time you remove something so you remove the largest thing right because we'll remove the largest thing, which is 10. And that'll be a constant time operation. Maybe I should put this in terms of O, right? We'll remove the largest thing. That'll be a constant time operation. And if you need to have, you know, before you apply a medium, you know, general advice, you should probably learn your fundamental data structure. So if you didn't know to apply heat, well, now you do, because you can think about the fact that I need to always have information about the maximum thing and I need to efficiently always understand what the maximum thing is, right? I need to efficiently always know what the maximum thing within my, my list is. That's a perfect application for a heap, right? But you should probably know what that is at least, right? If you're gonna be apply, uh, approaching this problem. You may not have known to use it, but if you don't know what a heap is, probably learn about your, your fundamental data structures before you approach these problems. And it's okay if you didn't know to apply it, you just need to know what it is. Hopefully there's a distinction there that makes sense. but don't let me go off and start rambling so this is you if you remove the largest thing right that'll be a constant time operation so you look at the whole thing you look at your whole nums you get in this heap form and n log n time and you can remove the largest thing add it to your score but now you need to put that thing with this operation applied back into the system so putting changed item back into heap is a O of 
login operation. Okay, so basically you remove the largest thing, you add that to your score, you apply this operation to change the thing to replace, and that's gonna take O log n time. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at each iteration, we're gonna say, okay, let's remove the largest thing from the heap, x from the heap. We're gonna then add x to the score, and then we're gonna put x divided by 3, the ceiling of x i before e, except after c. And we're going to put ceiling of x minus 3 back into heap. And we're just going to keep doing that, right? So we remove the largest thing, and that'll take constant time. We'll add that to our score, because we always want the largest thing, because right, that's going to maximize our score. It's a very greedy approach. And then we're going to put the ceiling back the seal of that thing back into the heap of log in time. That way, when this is 10, 3, 3, 1, and we remove it, it'll look like this. But then when we put back in the, the ceiling of that divided by 3, it'll be back at the front, right? And that'll be a log in operation. Instead of the alternative of just using sorting, which is more fundamental and more intuitive, right? If you just use sorting every time you remove something and added it back in, you have to sort the whole system. So instead of this being a login operation, you, this would actually be an end login operation if you wanted to sort it again, right? Because you could remove it in constant time. You just remove whatever is at the front of the array or the back of the array, depending on how you want to do it. That could be a constant time operation. Remove it at, and then, you know, add it to your score, put it back, but then you'd have to sort the whole system again. So using a heap basically changes that from end login to just login. And that's the, the beauty of this problem. Okay, so how are we going to do all this? So I just wrote a lot of stuff on the screen. Um... Let's remove all that, and let's use a heap library in Python. Now, the problem with the heap library in Python is that it, at least the heap library that I'm familiar with, is that it is a min heap only, okay? So that throws a little wrench in this situation, but uh, a min heap is identical to the negative of a max heap. Okay, because we want a max heap. So I'm not going to prove this to you, but if you really think about it, right, like a min heap is the negative of a max heap, right? Because if like you wanted the maximum values, you could just negate all the values and that would be the same as the minimum values, the negative of the minimum values, right? Like basically what I'm saying is if you had one, two, three, four, five, right? And you wanted to use a min heap to get the 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 largest value. Well, if you just negated all these values, you would get, look at, I'm explaining this as I just said I wasn't going to, right? And then now the min heap, what's the min value in here? Negative five. So if you just take the max of this is the same as the negative of the min of this, right? And this is just t applying the negative operation to all of these elements, right? Because the, the largest element, right? It's just the largest thing to the right versus if you negate that thing, it'll just be the minimum element, you know, to the left. So that's the basic idea here. So since we can't use a max heap using the heap library that I'm familiar with, we're just going to use a negative of the min heap. So to do that, we'll look at each index in range of nums, right? And then we'll just do uh, nums of i equals negative nums of i. Then we'll heapify using that idea. We'll have our score. Now, since this is a min heap that we're using to, to we're like adjusting our num so that we can use a min heap to actually represent a max heap, it's gonna make the operations a little funky, but just think through it. And in another language, hopefully you can more easily just use a max heap directly and you don't have to think about this idea of negating things to make a min heap work for a max heap problem. Okay. Um, so we remove the largest thing from X. So that's just as easy as saying, okay, our X is going to be heap Q. Now I'm just familiar with these, this library. So I understand which functions we're supposed to use, but this function will essentially just remove the smallest thing from the heap, right? So X equals heap pop. Um, what's our heap nums. And then we're going to add x to score. Let's negate it, right? Because it's going to be the negative of the element when it's inside of the heap, right? 
So we add that to score. So then score just plus equal X. And then we're going to put the ceiling of that back into the heap. So then we say heap Q that heap push into nums. What are we going to push? We're going to push seal of X divided by three. But again, we have to do the negative of that because everything needs to be negative inside the heap so that it's a min heap representing a max heap. So kind of weird, but just the fact that we don't have access to a max heap directly using this library. Okay. And then at the end, what we can do, we're just going to return score. We got to pray. So let's hopefully this works and I didn't mess something up, which is common. Okay, so what is the runtime of this? Well, let's think about it. Okay, so changing all the nums to negative nums, that's going to be an O of N operation in terms of time. So let's think about time first. All right, so that's an O and M operation. To heapify nums, this is an O of N log N operation. Now, you should know that if you just are familiar with heaps. If you want to think about it, to add something, it takes log N time, right? We said that earlier. And we have to do that for each N numbers, right? So maybe we should classify better that N is the length of nums, right? Just for the sake of argument, right? So if N is the length of nums, you have to add each num, which takes log N time, and there's N nums, so N log N, okay? To remove, we have to look at all K elements, right? I mean, we have to do K iterations of this, right? So because there's a K, so there's a K loop, okay? And then for all K elements, we have to pop the minimum thing. So this is going to take O of one time, right? This is a constant operation. Adding the score is a constant operation. Pushing back into the heap is a log of N operation, right? Because there's N elements in the heap. So when we remove something and add it back, that's going to take log N time. So this is k log n operations, and then we just return score. So in total, time is where we have O of n operations to negate the numbers, and then we have O of n log n operations to create the heap, and then we have O of k log n operations to run through the cycle of this problem, right? Because there's k iterations of us removing some, the, removing the maximum thing, adding it to our score, and then adding it back. So this obviously is going to shadow this in the long term because that's an extra factor of log n. So we don't need to think about that. And then we know we can kind of uh, make this a little cuter by saying that this is you know n plus k, ooh, n plus k log n time. Now for space, well, heapifying this, this is can, this can occur. In, um, in place. I don't know if the heap Q library does it in place, but well, let's just say for the sake of argument, and you can tell us to interview and say, you know, I'm not actually sure if this does it in place. I imagine that it does. It's probably something you should look up. I'm gonna look it up right after this video, but this can happen in place, right? The heap sort can happen in place. There's in place heap sort. So you can imagine that this is a constant operation. Negating these things are constant, right? These are already elements in the array. We're just negating them. Um, and then we just remove something from that nums array that we're given, and then we add it back. So this is a constant space, constant space. We just use the space that we're given. Right? We're just using the nums that we're given and we're using the nums we're given as a heap. So that would mean that our space is constant. All right, guys, hopefully this problem was pretty intuitive. This is kind of a strategy for a lot of problems. I've seen many problems that are essentially this, right? It's a greedy approach where you're given something, you do something to some members, you know, you're given an array nums, you you're trying to minimize the score, you're trying to maximize the score, and you're using this idea of always trying to greedily choose the maximum thing. And you can do that using the heap. All right, guys, have a good night.